What is going on, YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today, I am in downtown Fayetteville, North Carolina, and I'm here to talk about the disappearance of the Westerfield brothers. Two little boys, 11 and 7 years old, have been missing now for almost 50 years. September 12th, 1964, you have Margie Westerfield Bach, a single mother to two children, 11-year-old Terry and his 7-year-old brother, Alan. Now on that day, Marjorie, who at that time was a hairdresser, was going to work and she had hired a babysitter to come over and watch the boys. The babysitter comes, she takes off, she goes to work. Now according to witness testimony, Carl Bach, who was Marjorie's estranged third husband, I don't believe the divorce had gone through quite yet, he comes over to the house, instructs the babysitter to leave. She takes off. And as he's there at the house, Alan is playing outside on his bicycle. One of Terry's friends comes over to the house to ask if Terry could come outside to play. Carl Bach tells the boy, no, that Terry is on punishment. However, at four o'clock, Carl Bach takes the two brothers right here to downtown Fayetteville to the Broadway theater to watch a double matinee. Two movies are playing that day, a Western no name on the bullet, and then the latter movie would be a sci-fi movie, The Atomic Man. Carl Bach takes the two boys, drops them off at around 4 p.m and tells them he'll be here around eight o'clock to pick them up. He goes back home. Marjorie gets off of work. She asks Carl, where are the boys? And he says, oh, I took them to a matinee. And she says, what do you mean you took them to a matinee? She's like, yeah, I just, you know, they wanted to go to the movie, so I took them over there. So they start arguing about why he did that Finally, she gives up on the argument and she says, I'm going out. So she heads out. She goes to a club, some kind of social club called the NGO, I believe. Carl Bach comes back here at a quarter to eight, sits here and waits for the movies to let out. Eight o'clock comes. The movies let out or so. The boys don't show up. He waits there for another hour. By 9 p.m., the boys are not out of the movie theater. He goes into the movie theater to check to see where they're at. They didn't show up. Him thinking possibly that maybe Margie picked up the kids. He goes back to Margie's house and sits there and waits. One in the morning comes, Margie comes back from the club and she says, where are the boys at? And he says, did you pick them up? And she says, no, I didn't pick them up. What are you talking about? Where are my kids? They start arguing. They start fighting. I don't know why, but an hour goes by. Two o'clock in the morning. These boys, 11 and 7 years old, are not home. They don't know where they're at. They immediately call the police. The police come to the house to file a missing persons report. They interview Carl Bach. And they ask him exactly what happened. And he tells them how I told you, he drops the boys off at the matinee. He was supposed to pick them up at around a quarter to eight, eight o'clock. He comes to the movie theater and they don't show up. Now, the detectives at the time that were investigating this dis disappearance, they go to the movie theater and they interview all the employees. Not one of the employees seen those boys that day. These boys were very well known to all of these employees at the movie theater because they were frequent customers. They were always going to the movies and they knew them by name. Not only did they not see those children on that day, they did not see Carl Bach go into the movie theater to question them about where the two children were. Now at the time of the disappearance, Carl Bach and his wife, Marjorie Westerfield Bach, were estranged. They were separated. Now, if you go back into their past, Marjorie met Carl Bach 
when she was 18 years old, he was 10 years older than her. He was a soldier based at Fort Bragg here in North Carolina. Originally, they started dating. However, she just didn't like Carl Bach the way that a woman would normally like a man. She looked at Carl almost like he was her brother. Now, while she's dating Carl, she starts meet, uh, meeting up with a man and starts dating Thomas Westerfield, who was also a soldier stationed at Fort Bragg. So while this is going on, she's dating two guys at the same time, Thomas Westerfield and Carl Bach. One day she goes outside and asks Carl Bach if she could borrow his camera because she wants to go take some pictures. So she takes Carl's camera, goes outside, meets up with Thomas Westerfield and they just hit the town. They take pictures together. Who knows what were in those pictures? She gives Carl's camera back but forgets to take the film out. So Carl Bach gets his camera and sees, oh, there's film in here. He goes, gets it developed and sees pictures of his girlfriend, Marjorie, with Thomas Westerfield. Now he questions her about it and who knows what that conversation went or how it went or what have you. Eventually she's just continuing to date both guys at the same time carl goes up to new york city comes back with an engagement ring and proposes to marjorie she turns down his request ends up marrying thomas westerfield and that's where she had the two boys terry and alan later thomas is shipped out to germany the family goes out to germany that's where alan was born they come back things hit the skids and they ended up getting a divorce and after the divorce she has two kids and she meets up with Carl Bach again and they eventually meet up and get married now according to people that knew the family very well Carl Bach was very indifferent when it came to those two kids first of all they weren't his second of all you got to remember he found the film with pictures of Marjorie and her future husband, future ex-husband, Thomas Westerfield on the film. You got to think that there would be some jealousy. This man loved this woman very, very much. And she shunned him, married somebody else, had two kids. Oh, and then now she comes crawling back to me. And yeah, I took her back. But then now she has these two kids that I don't care for. This building you see right in front of you is the site where the old Broadway theater used to stand. The address back then was 215 Hay Street. The building was demolished, I believe, in 1978 or 1979. This would be where supposedly Carl Bach had dropped off their children to watch that movie. However, like I said, the employees never seen those children that day, nor did they see Carl Bach entering the establishment asking them where the children were. So you fast forward days, months, and years. Investigators believe, and unfortunately this is nothing but circumstantial evidence, that Carl Bach had something to do with the disappearance of Terry and Alan. They interviewed him several times. He doesn't know. So in 2000, a couple of Fayetteville homicide detectives go up to West Virginia to go talk to Carl Bach. At that time, he was 80 years old. And they said, hey, we want to talk to you about the disappearance of the Westerfield boys. And he referred to them as them boys. And he kept referring to them as them boys. He would not acknowledge their name. He would not acknowledge who they were. He would just say them boys the detectives felt that he was very standoffish at times but then he would go quiet and silent and wait for them to do all the talking to see what they knew when they left that meeting they had a gut feeling that this guy was responsible in some form or fashion for their disappearance and possible murder now fast forward again let's go to 2012 again the detectives 
go out to talk to Carl Bach. This time he lives in Wisconsin. Now he is 93 years old. This guy doesn't have many years left to live. So the detectives, they, they, they told him, they said, they said, listen, if we granted you immunity, we will not seek any charges against you. If you could just tell us where these boys are. And he actually was quiet for a minute and he was thinking about it. And he says, you know what? Maybe I would. Maybe I would do that, but you know what? Because of me being a former MP or military police officer, I can't do that. Now, when he was quiet and he was actually thinking about it, the detectives were almost certain that he was going to admit what happened. And he says to the detectives, quote, you know I was the last one to see them alive. Unquote. By all intents and purposes, every detective that worked on the case that has passed away and all the detectives that took over the case and they've retired, they all have a unanimous opinion and that is Carl Bach is responsible for the disappearance and murders of Terry and Alan Westerfield. Carl Bach died May 9th, 2016 in Tomo, Wisconsin. He was buried with full military honors. He went to his grave, not admitting what he had done. Thomas Westerfield, the father of the two boys, took his own life in 1978. And for all the years after their disappearance, their mother, Marjorie, who had remarried again for a fourth time, went to her grave, never finding out what happened to her boys. She, I believe, died in 2003 at the age of 70 uh, in South Carolina. Just one of those uh, mysteries that, sadly, will probably never get solved. Fayetteville homicide detectives are hoping that someone out there has some information that they can get to close this case. They're hoping that Carl Bach, maybe when he was, you know, getting older, that he started talking to people. Maybe he admitted what he'd done. They're still, you know, having an open investigation on this uh, unsolved disappearance and more than likely murder. Uh, if the boys were alive today, they would be well into their 60s. And maybe somebody out there remembers talking to Carl Bach. Maybe you were talking to him at a bar up in uh, West Virginia. Or maybe you were talking to him at a bar in Wisconsin. He got a little bit too much to drink. And uh, he says something that maybe he regretted saying. And you kind of shrugged it off as uh, this is an old man with his crazy stories. Uh, Carl Bach did have some kind of a criminal record. Uh, it was either for a robbery or assault. He did a little bit of time in Leavenworth prison, but he was offered to either do the rest of his time in Leavenworth or come back to the military. And he, of course, chose to come back to the mil military. Maybe somebody out there knows something. If you have any information on the disappearance of the Westerfield boys, contact the Fayetteville Homicide Unit. Their number is 910 433 1529. 910 433 1529. I'm Lamont at large. I'll catch up with you in the next vlog. Peace out.